In this presentation, we will discuss inventory tracking options within QuickBooks Pro 2020, QuickBooks Desktop 2020. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're currently in the Home tab. If you don't have the open windows open, you can go to the Views up top and go to the Open Windows list. Last time we entered information for service items, which would help us to create invoices and sales receipts related to it. Let's take a look at that first. That'll lead us into the topic of inventory items and how we can set up similar items related to inventory. So if we go into the invoices, then you'll recall last time we had the items on the left. We can then create the items. These are all service items then to create our invoice. And that will basically be the bill. The journal entry related to this would in essence be a debit to accounts receivable or an increase to the accounts receivable people owing us money if we were to issue this because we did a service and a credit to income which we called sales an income type of account that's what this invoice would generate now we want to do a similar process with regards to inventory what if we sold inventory well it would be the same thing wouldn't it we would just say hey we have a guitar here we sold the guitar let's put the guitar on it let's put the price of the guitar we get the amount of the guitar same thing should happen accounts receivable should go up as it, and, and the other side should go up, a sales account should go up or revenue should go up or income type of account, which we will call not service, but uh, some type of merchandising revenue account will then go up. However, that's not all that's going to happen here. If we use the full services of QuickBooks and inventory tracking, we also know that we're going to have to track the inventory, which means this invoice then will also drive the decrease in the inventory and it will drive the cost of goods sold being recorded two items that would not be on here on the invoice because on the invoice all we would have is the sales price not the cost of goods sold but the invoice itself would be driving those factors the inventory decreasing and the cost of goods being recorded that means in essence what what quickbooks would be doing if we did the full kind of service of the inventory is kind of recording inventory on what we would call a perpetual inventory system so that means if we bought and sold guitars, for example, we'd have to purchase the guitar. We'd have to put them on the books as an inventory item on the books. And that means in the chart of accounts, it would be in uh, inventory, but it would also be supported by a sub ledger describing what types of guitars we have and the cost of those guitars. Then when we make the sale of those guitars, uh, we'll, we'll sell them and, and QuickBooks will then apply the proper cost decreasing the proper cost recording the decrease in inventory in the account but also recording it in the sub ledger that would be a kind of perpetual type of inventory system that's the type of system we will use here and we'll give an example of that as we enter inventory items shortly but note i get a lot of questions for inventory because inventory with different types of inventory can be a bit confusing so just realize that if you have other types of systems you may not want to basically track the inventory fully for example, if you if you did something like uh, selling stuff, selling small items and, and buying and selling with Amazon or something like that, it might not be worth your time then to put all the inventory and track all the inventory in that process in QuickBooks. It might be something that's being tracked quite well in, in some other system, say on the other database program. It might not be worth the time to be increasing and decreasing the inventory. In, within QuickBooks, you may be then saying, hey, I would like to do that uh, in essence in another system to record the inventory tracking possibly in uh, another system and not be tracking all the, all the different type of products in that type of system within QuickBooks. So you'd have to determine whether or not uh, you want to track the inventory in that way. Uh, and there's a couple, couple different options you can think about one one method is that you could say, hey, why don't I uh, have not a perpetual inventory system, but a periodic inventory system? And in that case, instead of recording it and tracking it in QuickBooks, it might not be worth your time to do so. It might be easier to say something like if, if you say you're selling uh, sandwiches at a shop or something, if you know how many sandwiches were there at the beginning and then you know how many sandwiches were there at the end of the day, the difference between how many were there at the beginning and the ending would be what we would assume how many we sold. And you could then record the, the decrease in uh, the cost of goods sold, the inventory. So for example, you can then put all the purchases into inventory. You can count what happened throughout the time period and then record a transaction related to the consumption of that inventory periodically at the end of the day, 
at the end of the week or month. The other system you could think about using is just to simply say, hey, uh, I buy stuff and I sell stuff very quickly. So it's pretty close in time. So rather than me tracking inventory because it's not in my warehouse very long, you could say I'm just going to basically when I purchase the inventory, expense it at that point in time instead of putting it on the books as inventory. And whenever I buy it, I'm going to expense it as cost of goods sold or, or some type of expense at that point in time. And then, and then when I make the invoice, I don't need to track the, the tracking of the inventory to record the cost of goods sold or the decrease of the inventory. I can, in essence, simply use a service item in that case. So I'll say I sold you know, a, a guitar, but when I purchased the guitar, instead of putting it in inventory, I just simply uh, expensed it as cost of goods sold because all I do is basically buy guitars and then I give them to the client right when I get them. So I'm not holding on to a, a mass uh, inventory of guitars. Therefore, maybe it's not worth my time to track the inventory of guitars because all I'm doing is purchasing and then selling very close together. Therefore, you might say, hey, why don't I just, when I purchase them, I'll expense it as cost of goods sold. I'll set up basically, in essence, a service item for uh, the guitar that won't record a decrease in inventory or cost of goods sold. And, and, th and then I can just record the invoice in the similar fashion as I would with a service item and not have to worry about, you know, tracking the inventory. So it really depends, one, on how much inventory you have to, to, uh, as to whether you're going to track it uh, in the inventory system. Are you selling it immediately or not? And it also depends on if you have uh, some other method outside of QuickBooks that you might be using to track different types of inventories that might be somewhat complex or different or have some other database program that you're using if you're doing something like with Amazon or something like that where you have a lot of different inventory items that's being tracked outside uh, in another system. Is it worth your time to duplicate you know, the system within QuickBooks to track the inventory or should you basically be just entering the transactions with a journal entry? So just a few things to consider. We're here going to be using the perpetual system within QuickBooks. So we will be setting up the full perpetual system, letting QuickBooks then count the inventory for us as we do that. To, to do that within QuickBooks, the easiest inventory to do that with is inventory that's all similar in nature and, and therefore you don't have a whole lot of, of inventory items. When it gets more advanced than that, then you, can, you might need more specialization within the inventory system within QuickBooks uh, to, to support the uh, specialization, the more type of inventory that will be involved. So I just want to give that as a recap, just if you think about inventory as well, just remember, and you can, you can think about this in terms of just uh, inventory tracking methods in general, there's different methods you can track for inventory. If you want to look more into this, we have a, a course on basically just inventory tracking methods. So you can consider how to track inventory. If you have very large items of inventory, like cars or something like that, or maybe even guitars, You'll, you'll, you might use specific identification, actually identifying each specific car you have. Of course, you have the serial number, you know which car you sold, you would track in that format. If you're selling things of very similar nature, which is what we kind of assume in QuickBooks, we have a lot of things that are going to be similar in nature uh, that will group into items and there'll be the m amount of items. Then we assume some kind of flow within those items, meaning we don't track the serial number. We just say, that's this kind of guitar. I don't know which one of those kind of guitars I sold. I know I sold that kind of guitar. And within that item, then we would have to track, you know, what's the price of it? The price could have changed over time. We use flow assumptions to do that. And the flow assumptions are first in, first out, last in, first out, and the average method. So QuickBooks will typically uh, require whichever system uh, that we have to use you know, their system, I believe for the desktop version, we will be using uh, average method in order to calculate it. So just those are a couple things you might want to consider if you have uh, inventory items. What, what's the cost flow assumption that you're that you're using that you're considering? Do you want to be tracking it within QuickBooks or not? Uh, do you want specific identification or not? Is it being tracked outside of QuickBooks in some format and make a system that will both give you the information you're always balancing between how much information do you want to have within QuickBooks and the time that it takes to put that information into QuickBooks. Is the time going to pay off uh, for the added benefit of the added detail type of information that you, that you need in, in QuickBooks? And of course, the requirements that you need 
to and do things like your taxes and financials and, and that kind of thing. So just a couple things to keep in mind. This is a type of worksheet here that, that, that basically shows you the purchases, the costs, and the inventory and just kind of gives you an idea of the flow, the flows that happen within it. And this is a worksheet that we, we go through in our inventory method. We go through the first in, first out weighted and uh, last in, first out methods just so you get an idea of how the inventory flows work. So again, if you deal with a lot of inventory, it might be worth your time just to consider uh, inventory tracking methods. So back to QuickBooks. Next time, what we will do here, however, of course, is, tr is enter the information into the inventory. We're going to set up inventory items as in a similar fashion as we did with the service items using a perpetual inventory tracking system. And, and that'll mean that we're going to record the inventory. We're going to use the invoice to, to decrease the inventory, record cost of goods sold, and support what the amount is on the balance sheet with a subsidiary ledger for inventory, listing out the types of inventory and the costs of them.